Episode 1 of Heavenly Delusion began with a bunch of kids in uniform playing in a field filled with trees. It was serene, and the children could be seen partaking in a variety of activities. Later, they entered a classroom in which a robot was teaching the class, and a test was conducted on a touchscreen tablet. One of the students' tablets suffered a minor glitch and an unrelated question appeared. It asked the student if he wished to explore outside of outside, which confused him. The scene transitioned to two characters who were traveling through a ghost town, hoping to visit a place they know as heaven. Every house was broken, weeds and creepers grew from odd places and there were little to no resources available. Kiruko and Maru attempted to scavenge for resources, but failed to do so. Later, they were ambushed by a group of thugs, but neutralized the situation with ease. It was at this stage that viewers realized that Maru was quite talented in combat and martial arts. Kiruko also crafted a gun that shot a beam of heat that melted a street lamp pole. Maru and Kiruko happened to bump into an inn where they paid the owner a small sum of money to stay there. The duo indulged in a hot shower and a wonderful pork-based stew that the owner had cooked. The latter revealed that the place was being visited by a monster. Kiruko expressed her interest in defeating the monster and killing it. The owner was hesitant and gripped her knife in fear. Maru, being someone who doesn't sleep easily, ended up sleeping quite early. Kiruko also felt strange, losing consciousness moments later. The owner loaded her double-barrel shotgun when the monster flew towards her. The scene transitioned back to the facility. Tokio, who was on the receiving end of an odd question during the test, was unable to sleep and walked around at night. The director of the facility was awake as well. Tokio posed the same question to the director, and she revealed the truth, despite being advised not to. She revealed that there indeed was an outside of outside, but it is hell where abhorrent monsters lurk in the dark. In Heavenly Delusion Episode 2, Tokio is seen talking to Tarao, who is in a wheelchair, and he states his opinions about a world existing outside those walls. Upon questioning, Tokio confesses to Tarao that he likes Mimiheim. However, the latter suddenly winces in pain as the shot zooms in on his hand which has odd purple-colored marks. Following this, Tokio throws a tantrum since Koku receives Kona's drawing, not Tokio's. While the reasons have been unclear, Mimiheim sends an explicit picture of herself to Shiro. We then see Maru and Kuruko waking up after being unconscious. The duo realizes that their food is mixed with something that knocks them out. They encounter the innkeeper and reassure her that they would be able to kill the monster, giving verbal proof of their combat abilities. Kiruko and Maru work well as a team, but when the former is about to take the shot with her gun, the innkeeper intervenes, making her miss her shot. The innkeeper reveals that the monster is her son, who has been protecting her all this while. This leads the duo to conclude the true reason behind running the inn. The innkeeper feeds the guests to the monster that she thinks is her son, but the monster eventually kills her. Following this, we see Maru dodging its whip-like attacks and placing his hand on the monster's body since he has a special ability to kill cannibals. A stream of energy takes the shape of his hands and penetrates the monster's interiors, crushing its heart in the process. During a conversation with Kuruko, Maru states his true goal upon reaching heaven. He has a special case that is an injection containing a drug, which he is supposed to inject the drug into a person that looks like him. The episode then introduces another character named Mikura. Kiruko recalls her final interaction with her since Mikura offers the gun that the former is currently carrying, and asks Kiruko to save Maru with it. Kiruko then tells Maru that it is Mikura who has instructed her to take Maru to heaven. We then see the duo come across a village that is self-sufficient and dependent on the food that they grow for themselves. At first, they wonder if this is heaven, but they aren't able to find Maru's doppelganger. The duo then comes across a box that has a stamp matching the insignia carved on Kiruko's gun. They then decide to head back to Tokyo by ship in search of heaven. After this, Maru confesses his feelings for Kiruko, but she seems to have rejected him. He apologizes for forcing himself on her, to which she replies by saying that although her body is that of a woman, she is a man in her mind. The episode ends with Kuruko stating that she is indeed a man. Heavenly Delusion Episode 3 featured a flashback, in which we see a character named Haruki who was being bullied by thugs. Just as he was about to be killed by one of them, Robin Inazaki saved him in the nick of time. 
This is the same man that was seen in the picture that Kiruko showed the innkeeper. The scene focuses on Kiriko, who was in the same orphanage that Robin and Haruki were from. She was a popular kart racer who was adored by her fans. A man with a strong build accompanied her, and they referred to him as Doctor or Master. Haruki was warned by one of his friends that the aforementioned person was conducting experiments on human beings as well. Haruki always addressed Kiriko as sister, and the two shared a close bond. The following day, Haruki climbed onto a vantage point to view his sister's race. However, he spotted a camouflaged man-eater on the track. He pursued the man-eater and attempted to neutralize it. The race continued as no one was aware of the man-eater's presence. However, Kiriko and her competitors reached the arcade, where the man-eater was present. She then saw Haruki's body attached to the man-eater. Her instincts took over, and she rushed to the scene immediately. She pulled Haruki's body from the man-eater's mouth, but was horrified to see that his entire lower body and limbs were missing. Despite this, Haruki was barely alive. A gunshot was then heard, and the next thing Haruki remembered was waking up in a hospital. He staggered and stumbled upon a mirror. He was horrified to see himself in Kiriko's body. He inquired about the doctor who treated him, who had fled from the town. The stitches around his skull were a clear indication that the doctor had fit Haruki's brain inside Kirko. The next couple of weeks went by as Haruki attempted to make peace with the situation. He couldn't find Robin Inazaki or any other children from the orphanage. Haruki, who is now Kiruko, resolved to take on odd jobs in the hopes of finding Robin. This is how she came in contact with the people who requested her to be Maru's bodyguard. Maru now realized that it was Haruki who was in Kiriko's body and tried his best to process this rather disturbing information. Episode 4 began with a man-eater entering the ship and terrorizing everyone inside it. Naturally, Maru and Kiruko decided to take this into their own hands. The latter displayed incredible intelligence by allowing the man-eater to enter the ship. She realized that it relied on creating a shell of water around it to maneuver on land. Kiruko then led it straight to the place where a ton of marijuana was kept. Owing to the absorbing capability of the plant, the man-eater lost its water shell and it dried up immediately. Maru confirmed the kill using his special abilities. Kuku asked Tokio to follow her. She took Tokio to a place that was adjacent to the wall. She leaped up with ease, and her feet and hand were glued to the wall. She was able to climb the wall with just her hands, confirming that each student in the facility has a specific set of skills. Tokio took the help of a device that allowed him to ascend a wall. The two then entered a set of vents that led to a room, where they climbed down and observed a set of odd-looking creatures that were incubating. Tokio was mesmerized by it, but an alert was sent out in the intercom which led to the two escaping back into the vents. The weird thing about this scene was that the team monitoring the CCTV footage was unable to see the intruders. This phenomenon was probably connected to the time Shiro received explicit images and Tokio received an odd message during his test. Following this, the scene transitioned to Shiro confronting Mimiheim and asking her about the explicit images. She revealed that she hadn't sent any pictures to him, after which he proceeded to have a conversation about his urges. In this episode of Heavenly Delusion, viewers saw Tokio confess his feelings for Kona. Before that, he was quite upset when he met Tarao. During that interaction, Tarao kissed Tokio, which shocked him and saddened him thoroughly. He naturally sought the one person that could comfort him and visited Kona. He first confessed to Kona about his romantic feelings, which Kona reciprocated. However, Tarao's condition was getting worse. It looked like Tarao could die at any second. As such, he warned Tokio about the place they were in and asked him to run away if he could. Heavenly Delusion Episode 5 opens with a couple of B-rolls showing a society that has managed to find safe water and conduct recreational activities. Soon, Kuruko is seen trading a CD containing music by a rare artist. However, the CD was no longer functional and she couldn't get a good deal on it. Maru, on the other hand, was bored and decided to spend his time in an old arcade. He was picked on by a group of thugs. However, little did they know that Maru was excellent in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He was able to beat them all up with ease. Just when one of them was about to escape, Kuruko got a hold of the thug and beat him up too. Following this, Maru explained how he met Mikura, 
and how she trained him to kill Hirakos, or man-eaters. Mikura even confirmed that he was the only one capable of killing them, which is why he is tasked with reaching heaven. Kuruko leaves Maru behind and decides to go in search of some more information. She overheard someone talking about the Ministry of Reconstruction, and recollected a conversation that she once had with Robin regarding the same. Kuruko soon returned to the room, and she panicked since she couldn't find Maru. Soon Maru talks about the war collapse theory. According to this theory, humans built robots to make their lives easier. However, the human race had far too much time on their hands, and therefore, started monitoring each other. This led to humans enforcing laws among themselves, which ultimately led to a war that marked the downfall of civilization. We are then transitioned to the facility built within the walls. One of the staff members noticed a footprint in the incubation room. He became suspicious and decided to step outside where the children had gathered. They were dancing and playing music, in the hopes of helping Toreo recover from the illness. Later that night, the staff member and the director gathered in the same room as Toreo. The ECG flatlined and they noted his time of death. The students were notified about the news the next morning and they offered flowers at his funeral. Tokio asked Kona about Azura and how the person died. This scene in Heavenly Delusion Episode 5 transitioned to the director talking about Azura's cause of death, which was suicide. The main characters, Maru and Kuruko, encountered a man from the ship who brought the remains of the man-eater. He was in search of a doctor who could keep one alive forever. Kuruko assumed that the man in question was the doc that she was searching for. However, the man had only heard rumors about this person. Toreo's remains are examined and left behind a black-colored solid object with red accents. This horrified the director as they didn't know what the object was. Heavenly Delusion Episode 6, titled 100% Safe Water, shows the protagonists following the map that they had come across in the previous town. The logic behind choosing a place like this was the assumption that a place like Heaven would have absolutely clean drinking water. Upon reaching the town, they came across a young woman named Totori, who had a hotel of her own. She was about Maru's age and offered the two a room to keep their belongings while they explored the place which had 100% safe drinking water. And upon conducting an investigation, Maru and Kuruko found two injured men. That's when they encountered a wild bear that chased them. Kuruko used her Kiru beam on a construction pole that fell on the bear and knocked it out cold. Maru was summoned to kill the bear with his Maru touch, which he renamed Fatal Dive. He was unable to do it, and the bear regained consciousness while he was in point-blank range. Maru and Kuruko then found an elevated spot that they climbed to save themselves from the bear. They wanted to kill the bear and return to the hotel soon. Kuruko wanted to give the battery some warmth, which is why he took it out of her Kira beam. However, she accidentally dropped it. Maru didn't want to climb down to get the battery since the bear was lurking around. Kuruko suggested the idea of Maru receiving permission to touch her chest if he went down to pick up the batteries. Knowing Maru's ulterior motives and his feelings towards Kuruko, he jumped down with no thought and picked up. He barely managed to escape the bear that was lurking around. We are then shown that Kuruko came up with a plan to kill the bear. Maru was asked to jump down and catch her when she jumped. He acted as a cushion and was instructed to run away. Kuruko fired two bullets into the bear's head with impeccable accuracy, killing it immediately. Maru immediately reminded Kuruko about her promise to him. She refused to comply for obvious reasons. Luckily, Totori intervened just in time and saved Kuruko from Maru. She took him to his room and offered to perform acts of sexual nature for money. She undressed herself and placed Maru's hand on her chest. The latter's nervousness and excitement turned into abject fear when he was able to use his Maru touch on Totori, who was a human being. He called Kuruko into his room, and she was shocked to see Maru with Totori in his room, who was completely naked. The two apologized immediately, and Totori didn't mind since she was the one who had initiated it. The focus shifted towards the facility where Tokio was instructed to rest in a room. Soon. He saw Azura floating in the air, which startled him. However, he soon woke up and realized that it was a dream. The doctor in the facility gave Tokio a strange look that suggested suspicion. Soon, the scene transitioned to Maru and Kuruko. The latter realized that this was a trap that was set by the people in the town. The two managed to save Iwata, one of the injured persons and village chief. Totori expressed her interest in becoming the hotel king. However, she was quite sad the following morning since Iwata had succumbed to his injuries. Heavenly Delusion Episode 8 began with Kuruko and Maru entering Dr. Yusami's facility. There were plenty of injured people who had prosthetic limbs made from metal. As Maru and Kuruko continued to walk further into the facility, they realized that Dr. Yusami was actually helping people live better life. Soon, they reached the ward containing the same patient that terrified Mizuhashi. The sight horrified Maru and Kuruko, 
Since they saw a woman who was cut up into pieces and attached to various machines, Yusami went on to reveal that this was the person that Maru had to kill. Naturally, this shocked the duo, and they asked him if humans could be man-eaters as well. It was at this point in Heavenly Delusion that fans got a glimpse of how man-eaters came into being. Once a person is infected with a virus, they die as human beings and become man-eaters eventually. The person in question was infected and there was nothing that Yusami could do, except slow down the rate of progression. The patient wanted to see the sky one last time before she died. She thanked Yusami for all that he had done for her, and Maru proceeded to free her from the pain and suffering. During the protest, one of the members from Liviamon threw a rock which instigated a violent reaction from the Immortal Order. They retaliated by throwing a rock as well. This led to Mizuhashi falling on the ground and injuring herself. However, one of the members who had taken her inside to treat her lied to the followers. He stated that their leader was dead, and Liviamon decided to attack the Immortal Order. This led to one of the members killing someone as well. The Immortal Order members fled from the building and met Dr. Yusami on a street. He revealed that Hashio had died of natural causes. He then instructed his followers to commute to a nearby settlement and wait for him upon reaching there. Kuruko asked them about Robin, and they knew him since he worked with Dr. Yusami. She was incredibly happy that Robin was alive. Hashio was someone Yusami dearly loved, and he decided to spend some more time with her on the roof. Unfortunately, he proceeded to shoot himself in the head, as he held Hashio in his arms. Maru and Kuruko immediately ran to the roof and they found Yusami's dead body. Maru was incredibly disturbed and emotional. He told Kuruko that he was extremely different from Robin and Yusami since his hands only brought death. Toward the end, fans see Yusami hold onto a pin that had the same crest as Kuruko's weapon. It will be interesting to see the connection between Yusami with the crest, as well as what it represents. The protagonists of Heavenly Delusion, Maru and Kuruko, are trying to make ends meet by working odd jobs. They thought that it'd be a good idea to have a signboard that could get them more customers. However, while talking to Maru, Kuruko miswrote the phrase, we kill man-eaters, as we kill man-eats. On the bright side, Kuruko managed to catch a few freshwater fish and cook them for dinner. Kuruko seemed to admire Maru's looks until he talked. However, the latter's confusion regarding the food spoiled Kuruko's mood at the time. The scene transitioned to two men keeping guard from a vantage point. They saw Maru and Kuruko set up a fire, which they happened to report to a certain person named Dr. Yusami. His blood-stained gloves certainly gave an ominous perception to the audience. Just before the guards could bring the duo to Dr. Yusami, members from Liviamon were able to get a hold of them. At this point, Maru and Kuruko understood more about this organization and why they were staunch opposers of the Immortal Order. Mizuhashi, the leader, was once a patient in the Immortal Order, and her leg was amputated. She required a metal rod that supported her leg. According to this character in Heavenly Delusion, there was a person who was barely alive, chopped up to pieces, and supported by numerous wired machines. The conversation steered towards the possibility of attaching a brain to robots which made Kuruko anxious. She inquired if the doctor in her photograph was Dr. Yusami. Mizuhashi immediately denied it, stating that Dr. Yusami was much younger. They revealed their plans of hosting a protest that would allow Kuruko and Maru to enter the Immortal Order HQ's basement. This is because the organization allegedly had a man-eater inside. The protagonists of Heavenly Delusion made their way into the basement. They could sense the presence of a man-eater. However, Kuruko started hallucinating severely, which led to her misfiring the Kira beam. Moreover, her hallucination led her to believe that she was being killed by the man-eaters and that Maru has died. However, Kuruko soon regained her consciousness and was shocked to find Maru kissing her. The latter went on to kill the man-eaters that seemed to have caused the hallucination in the first place. At this point in Heveli Delusion, Maru and Kuruko found Dr. Yusami, who politely requested for their help. Ashura looked like an extraterrestrial character who resided alongside their classmates in Takahara Academy. They had superpowers that enabled them to briefly shut down all the cameras throughout the school. They wanted to do this to bid their dear friend Kona goodbye. Shortly after, Ashura took their own life. This character in Heavenly Delusion still hasn't been explored thoroughly, and there's much mystery surrounding her. However, later in the episode, Mimiheim was able to see Ashura's figure at the exact spot where she died, while no one else was able to see it. In the previous episode, Dr. Yusami took his own life. They saw him hold onto a pin that bore the same crest as the one on the Kira beam. The two were curious, and they decided to investigate the place where Yusami was from. However, they encountered a strange man resembling a bandit. He made money by narrating stories, and the duo hoped they could get more clues regarding the emblem, which would explain the reason behind Maru's true goal. It was quite clear that this man was scamming Maru and Kuruko of some money, 
The minute Kuruko threatened him, he fled the scene. Kuruko's observational skills were impeccable as she found that very emblem on a signboard. The crest was the insignia of a school named Takahara Academy. It was no surprise that the entire building was ruined. At this point, Kuruko had gotten her hands on a letter the director wrote for the academy. The two soon realized that this academy had numerous branches, and the mystery behind Maru's true goal probably lied in one of them. In addition, they came across a strange graffiti that resembled a bird-human hybrid, which was awfully close to an abstract representation of Ashura. Tokio, who was a little worried about his health, was advised to take rest. The entire institution declared an emergency meeting with all important people who seemed to be board members. At this point, they were shocked to announce that Tokio was pregnant. The institute never explained the concept of gender or sexual intercourse, which is why they're shocked. Naturally, people were curious as to who the father was. While it wasn't revealed, it is highly possible that the father was Kona. Both Kona and Tokio shared an intimate relationship. The next episode of Heavenly Delusion could possibly reveal the father. The episode began with Maru and Kuruko seated in Juchi's car. Moments later, the Heavenly Delusion viewers realized that the story that Juchi narrated was true. He was one of the breeding pigs who was jailed and forced to mate with the women who imprisoned him in the first place. He then managed to escape with the help of two women, one of whom was the mother. However, someone alerted the facility, and the women were hanged to death to make a statement to those who attempted to escape. The tattoo on his arm was real, and Kuruko decided to visit the faculty to check if Juchi's kid was still alive. Juchi was worried sick, but Maru and Kuruko went into the facility to confirm whether or not his son was alive. At this point, they were looking around for clues to see if anyone was around. However, in a split second, the duo felt cold and were on the verge of getting frostbitten. That's when they realized that it was the work of a Hiroko. The Kirubim helped them escape. After this, they confirmed that the entire facility was a ghost town and they conveyed this message to a dejected Juchi. Two other men who were in the facility were shocked to see Juchi well and alive. They confessed to him that they had taken care of the child. They took him to the house where they lived, and Juchi had an emotional reunion with his child. The air was filled with joy and celebration, as Juchi was finally reunited with his kid. However, it was observed that there was some lingering tension between Juchi and the man who was referred to as breeding pig number 9. Chaos ensued once again in the middle of the night when everyone felt the temperature drop to a dangerous level. That's when Kuruko realized that it was an attack by a Hiroko. She took Juchi's son and ran as far as she could, only to realize that the baby was the Hiroko slash man eater that caused the problem. However, the attack stopped as soon as the baby regained consciousness, the situation was neutralized, and things were back to normal once again. After Maru and Kuruko took Juchi's car, they attempted to leave, however, the vehicle broke down, and they had a rather awkward interaction soon. Later on in the show, Juchi murdered someone with a circular saw, he stated that the victim was responsible for the death of the mother. This allowed viewers to understand that Juchi had killed breeding pig number 9 since he was the one who had alerted the facility and caused the death of the two women. The director of the institution showed her true intentions during her interaction with Dr. Sawatari. She intends on using Aishima, who was recently appointed as the deputy director of Takahara Academy. Dr. Sawatari soon realized that the director's choice of increasing her clearance level within the facility was to use her. Furthermore, there was a shot of the super beam, which is now in Kuruko's possession. In this episode of Heavenly Delusion, it was then revealed that a surgical procedure to transfer the brain onto a new body was possible. With this, the director intended on living forever. However, it was quite clear that Aishima was unaware of the director's plan and she certainly hasn't given her consent. The Heavenly Delusion protagonist duo embarked on a journey to find more about Maru's goal. They decided to camp at an abandoned house. What intrigued them was a massive smoke that was seen in the distance at night. They wanted to be cautious, and therefore, decided to visit the place during the daytime. A shot of the facility showed a mysterious man walking around, and that person was none other than Robin Inazaki. Tokio successfully managed to give birth. Kona is clearly the father in this case, and he even managed to synchronize with Tokio. What he meant by this is still unclear. Meanwhile, Mimiheim told Kona about how she has the ability to see things that will happen in the future. What looks like an event that will take place years in the future seems to occur moments after she envisions them. On the other hand, events that seem to take place moments after envisioning them, never seem to happen. This was an indication that such events seem to take place far off in the future. It was scary because she saw Kona as a Hiroko. A rather vague announcement was made and the students assembled near the swimming pool. The good news was that Tokio was now allowed to attend classes with her classmates. 
Students had no idea what to do when the PA system announced that a test was about to commence. Students were asked to reach outside of outside, and it referred to the students as Hirakos. The students at Takahara Academy were summoned by their teachers and were asked if they wished to go to the outside of the outside. The children cheered on and everyone was quite excited. It was exactly at this time when the academy was attacked and a huge projectile damaged the ceiling of the building. Chaos ensued, and students were running all over the place. It was at this stage that the scene transitioned to the journey that Maru and Kuruko embarked on. In an attempt to reach the Ibaraki facility of Takahara Academy, the duo stumbled upon a settlement. They wanted to eat the food, but the paper currency was no longer in use. They had to register with the Ministry of Reconstruction and would receive five tokens each for doing so. At the counter, Kuruko inquired about Robin Inazaki and the official asked the nature of their relationship. Kuruko was both elated and nervous to meet Robin, the one person she counted on and loved. They had a ton of questions for each other and Robin asked Kuruko to take a shower. Little did she know that Robin was no longer the person she knew. He cuffed Kuruko to the bed and sexually assaulted her. Robin Inazaki continued to remind Kuruko of her horrid past. Haruki, who was a young boy, looked up to Robin and always wanted to spend time by his side. Unfortunate events almost led to his death, and his brain was then surgically attached to Kuriko, who sacrificed her body for him. Horrors of the past came to light once again while the assailant forced himself on her. Dr. Sawatari was panicking since the system went down, and he didn't know a way to differentiate the identical twins that Tokio gave birth to. Ayashima came rushing in, and he asked her about the commotion. She launched an investigation to find out what exactly happened. Meanwhile, the director, who seemed to be disabled, was able to get up from her wheelchair and run away. Mimiheim and her classmates saw a massive cavity in the wall. After getting all the children to safety, they stepped outside. They were shocked to see that there indeed was an outside of an outside. The fact that the ceiling was that high shocked everyone. Taka, and Zu, Shiro, and Mimiheim stepped out of the Takahara Academy's premises and continued exploring. The students assumed that this was a part of the test, and continued to think about the criteria for this test. Taka and Anzu went ahead to explore while Mimiheim and Shiro decided to head back inside and inform the rest of the class about the outside of the outside. The scene soon shifted to DR. Sawatari who was accompanied by Ayashima and other engineers, they believed that the babies deserved to be handed over to Tokyo. Despite the director's twisted plans involving the newborn child, it was at this stage of Heavenly Delusion episode 13 that Ayashima decided to execute the Noah plan. She devised a strategy to safeguard the children of the academy, but more details were not revealed in this episode. After what Robin did to her, Kuruko no longer knew who she was, she didn't know if she was Haruki or Kuriko, she did not wish to think and just wanted to obey orders. This was a clear sign of the trauma she had just experienced. Maru beat up Robin Inazaki's lackey when he made his way to his quarters. When he opened the door, Maru saw Kuruko lying on a bed, undressed, and with her hands tied together by a rope. After looking at her for a second, he snapped and looked rather dead inside. He cornered Robin and took him to the ground with a single punch, while he lay there. Maru kept raining blows on Robin as his blood splashed onto his face. Maru continued to punch with no emotion until Kuruko begged him to stop. It took Maru everything he had to stop himself from hitting Robin. Maru confessed one more time, but this time he showed a great deal of maturity, stating that he liked Kuruko for who she is as a person, and not Kuriko or Haruki. Sawatari handed over the baby to Tokio, the director threatened its existence, and asked the AI, Mina, to take it away. At this moment, Tokio's eyes glowed blue and started morphing into a monster-like being while a flesh-like shell started to encase her and her child. The director was also caught in this, but the episode cut the scene before fans could see the full transformation. Meanwhile, Mimiheim slipped from a height and Shiro caught her and saved her. He confessed that he loved her, and Mimiheim gave her a Takahara Academy pin as a sign of her reciprocity. The episode ended with Mimiheim, and Zu, Shiro, and Taka on a speedboat as they were mesmerized by a distant city skyline, confirming that the calamity had not taken place yet.